Hello, the report I'd like to spend some time on today is the Google Analytics Cohort Analysis. A cohort is really simply a segment of users based on a specific date. So a cohort could be all users based on acquisition date, which is really just the date of the first session. With the holidays coming up, I figured it'd be a good time to once again take some time and dig into the report. So now what we're doing is we're looking at a Google Analytics cohort report on the screen. The setup is at the top of the report where you see acquisition type, cohort size, metric, and date range. The cohort type is where you specify the date that you want Google Analytics to use to create the report. Right now, the only thing you have to know is that it is the only option we have. This is basically just the date of the first session. So I know it's only one option, but it's okay. The cohort size is the time window that you wanna use when you're looking at the cohort type. So using one day would mean that you would wanna see all the users that came in on that given day. If you're choosing the week option, you would see all the people that came in within the last seven days. The metric is simply the data that you'll see in the report. The next area where you see my mouse hovering is where you can change the graph. So if you select some of the dates below, October 25th, 26th, you'll simply see those lines start to appear in the graph below. So that's where you would really change your graph to see more detail. Other good information to know is really the per user metrics that you can get into within the cohort analysis. So if I dive in here and pull down this menu, you can see goal completions per user, page views per user, revenue per user, and session duration. If I pull down the size, the cohort size, as I mentioned, you see those days and weeks, and then your only acquisition date option. Now that you understand the setup of the report, let's scroll down and dive in a little bit more into metrics. So I set this report up with all sessions, paid sessions, email, and I looked at users who had completed transaction. So looking at all sessions, what you're really looking for here is trends in the data. So if you're looking through here, you can see that the first day, day zero, is the day of the initial visit. The second day is showing the percentage of users that returned to the site. So they were retained within the site on day one, day two, day three, and so on and so forth. So looking here where the percentages are higher, users came back. So you really want to overlay this information with the context of your marketing initiatives. I've gone ahead and changed the date range here to 14 days to show you that 14 days simply expands the days that are being shown on the report, not the number of days that are expanded vertically within the columns of the Google Analytics report. The reason for that is because typically after about 12 days, we see a drop off and the data isn't as valuable to us because users are not continuing to return to the site 12 days after. So when scrolling through the data, you know, you're really looking for trends. Unfortunately for us, this data cannot be exported out of analytics. So you're going to want to screen capture, or, you know, kind of copy and paste it in, unfortunately. Um, but really, if you notice here on October 23rd, we had a dip. And I looked at those days and you'll see that later on in this video. And you'll notice that the dips continue throughout each segment, which made me question if it was a weekend. And like I said, you'll see later in this video, I'll pull up a calendar and we can see that the dips that we're seeing uh, after October 23rd to October 24th, October 24th in this case was a Saturday. So for this particular client, we saw fewer retention and users coming back to the site on the weekend. And then interestingly, on that date range. So if you look at October 23rd there, it picks back up the following Monday. So definitely a percentage of the users for this particular client 
are coming back to the site a day later or a business day later in this case. So you want to look at your trends across segments and then across each day to see where where different um, different metrics can be of use. Again, definitely overlaying this with your marketing calendar is going to be where you're going to get the most insights. Digging in here, where you're going to get some of the most value from this report is looking at your data at a segment by segment basis. So as I mentioned earlier, I had added email sessions, um, sessions with transactions. I left all sessions there for a baseline, um, as well as paid search sessions. So email and paid search um, deliver more of a percentage uh, than the baseline returning to the site. And then by far the most number of users returning a day or so after the initial visit is in these sessions with transactions. So what you really want to do there is dig in and ask why are people coming back to the site? So after they've made a transaction, are they coming back to make additional transactions? Or is it something where they're coming back to get information on when the product will ship? Or are they coming back to find out additional information? Or maybe um, perform a different task on the site? So you really want to dig in and ask yourself if this is um, the purpose and the way the site was intended. So going back into this, um, looking at some of the different metrics um, per user, um, you can really dig in a little bit more. So one of the sessions that I like is the total session duration. So really what you're looking at right here is the first visit session duration, and then you're looking at a day or so later in that grouping, um, how long those are lasting. Um, then another one that you can look at um, to add some value here is the uh, page views um, and then some of the sessions, or you can go up and look at the per user metrics. So revenue per user is an interesting, and it really kind of alludes to, if you look at your traffic as a group, you know how much that traffic is worth. So for example, with pay per click, per user, your revenue divided, so it's really how much you made that day, and then dividing that out per users each time they're coming back. So you're looking at a monetary value and treating each user as sort of cash, if you think about it that way. Now, to be fair, when you're looking at revenue per user, a lot of people think it is a useless metric, um, but really it could be an important growth driver for your business. So it may be something that you wanna look at. A lot of the argument against it is to look more at lifetime value. So coming back full circle to this report, um, you know, I, I realize it at first can be a little bit hard to understand, but it is definitely something that you'll figure out with time. It's a useful feature and it really at its root is allowing you to analyze some of the delayed response you might see in response to your, your marketing um, and your pay-per-click tactics. So you're taking the data and you're looking at improvements and trying to get better conversions over time. So, you know, it's definitely possible to run the analysis across different segments. Um, you can look at average session time for visitors. You can look at it on mobile versus desktop. Um, and you can configure your report to look at, um, you know, the data by week or by month. So the main takeaways are to look at your different segments, look for your data trends, and to 
take the time to even copy and paste the data. I'm sorry you can't export and look at it visually with a heat map, which could help as well. So thanks for your time. Glad you enjoyed it.